Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at the present value of an annuity. Specifically, we're going to be looking at an ordinary annuity. This topic is covered in financial accounting, introductory course, the CPA exam. The topic is also covered in intermediate accounting, a little bit more in depth if you're interested, if this wasn't good enough for you. As always, connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. Please like my lectures, share them, subscribe to the channel, put them in playlists. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people, especially these days with the coronavirus out there. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, practice questions, true, false, multiple choice that will help you supplement your education and or your CPA exam. Check out my web. The prerequisite for this session is the present value of a single amount. The link is in the description. It's very helpful that you understand how the present value of a single amount work because it will help you understand the present value of an annuity. In this lesson, we're going to be working at the present value of an annuity and specifically ordinary annuity because there's an annuity due. We don't cover annuity due in a financial accounting course. Just want to let you know, if you are looking for an annuity due, look up my intermediate account. So what are we looking for? We are looking to find the present value of an annuity. Now, the first thing is, what is an annuity? An annuity is a series of equal payment occurring at at equal intervals. So simply put, you're gonna have to pay or receive $100, $100, $100, $100, and $100. You're gonna receive one, two, three, four, five one hundred dollars $100. The question is, how much will you pay for this series of payments? So how much will you pay will, with this present value of an annuity? Annuity is a payment or a receipt of the same amount of money over a period of time. For example, here the series is three annual payment, 100, 100, and 100. An ordinary annuity is defined as equal, as equal end of period payment at an equal interval. What does that mean? It means you don't receive the first payment until a year from now, a period from now. We assume the period is year, but at period one, then period two, then period three, the same payment at regular interval. So what we need to find out now is how much will we pay for these payments? Now we should know how to do so. If we know the present value, we know how to do so. How do we compute the present value of this annuity? Well, we have to assume a certain interest rate. So let's assume 15%. What we will do is we will discount this $100 at 15% and equal to one. And this is how we do so. So we'll take the $100 divided by one plus the interest rate raised to the nth power, which is the present value of a single amount. How do we discount this second $100? Well, we'll take $100 divided by one plus I raised to the second power. We discount the second $100. Then we have a third $100. How do we discount the third $100? $100 divided by one plus I raised to the third power. What does that mean? It means if you put away $228.32 today, if you invest this money today in an investment that's going to pay you 15%, you can withdraw $100, $100, $100 year one, year two, and year three. So the best way to show you is to prove it. I like to show the math proof. So let me show you that if you put $228.32 today, you can take out the $100. So that computation is correct. So let's put $228.32. And here's what's gonna happen. It's gonna, go, it's gonna grow after a year. After a year, this money's gonna grow at 15%. The balance will be 262.56. Then you're going to take out, you're going to withdraw. Remember, we're going to take out $100. Why do we take out $100? Because that's the annuity. The annuity says you take out $100. Then you're going to have left 162.568. This is year two. This money is going to grow also at 15% times 1.15. It's going to become 186. Then you're going to withdraw $100 from this money. And you're going to, see this is year two. Let me just say this is year 
year two. Then you're going to withdraw $100 of that money. Then at the beginning of year three, you're going to have $86.95. And this money is going to grow at 15% as well, 1.15. And you will withdraw $100 and you will have zero. And the balance is technically zero. So this is beginning of year three. Then it's end of year three. You will have this money. Then you will take out the money and you will have zero balance. So notice, indeed, if we invest 228, if we invest 228 and at 15% and take $100 every year, we will be able to take $300. So this is how we found the present value of this annuity. Now, now let's assume we've, we need to find the present value of an annuity with 20 payments. Well, this is going to become cubersome. This is going to become cubersome. So what we do, there is, a, there is a present value table, just like there is a, a present value table for an annuity, just like there's a present value table for a single payment, the present value for a future payment. So there's a present value table to compute the present value of an annuity. This computation is identical, identical to computing the present value of each payment in table B1 if you looked at the present value of a single annuity. However, they did all the computation for us. They did all the computation for us. And here's how it works. So if we want to find the present value of an investment that the interest rate is 15% and the period is three years, here's how we find out. We'll take the, from table B1, the present value of the single payment is 0.8696, which is this factor here is 0.8696. Nine, six. Then we'll take the present value of the second payment, 0 0.7561, 0 0.7561. This is what we did. Then on the third one, 0 0.6575, 0 0.6575. If we add up those factors, if we add up those factors, they will add up to 2.2832. So if we want to find the present value of any amount invested at 15% after three years, all that we have to do is take the payment, multiply payment, which is the payment, multiply it by the present value annuity factor, which is the payment is $100. For our example, the present value annu annuity factor is 2.2832, which is 228.32. Now, rather than looking at table B1 and adding all the in, all, all those payment, we have a table that's called the present value of an annuity. Notice here, we have to be careful which table we are using. In my textbook that I'm using, it's table B3. But you have to look at the title, the present value of an annuity, and it's an ordinary annuity. And this is how we find the factor, but you don't have to worry about this. So if we're looking at, at an investment that's three years, three periods, three periods, an interest rate is 15%, the factor is point, I'm sorry, 2.2823. So you take the payment, multiply it by the factor, multiply it by the factor, and it's going to give you the present value of the annuity. So we find the present value of the annuity. So this is how we use the present value of an annuity. Now, how is it used? How the present value of the annuity used? Um, a common way to do it, let's assume you want to, um, you want to invest money uh, so you can take out $20,000, $20,000, $20,000, and twenty thousand dollars for your kids' education for the next four years. But you want to know how much to put today, okay? So we know n equal to four. Every year you need to take out twenty thousand so you can pay your son or daughter's tuition. N equal to four. And the interest rate is what interest rate are you going to use? Well, what are you going to invest your money in? So let's assume the interest rate is five percent. How much money you will need to invest? Obviously, you will need to invest less than 80,000 because you are taking out 80,000. To find out exactly, well, n equal to 4, i equal to 5, n equal to 4, n equal to 4 right here, i equal to 5 right here. 
So the factor is 3.5460. So if we take 20,000 times 3.5460, today you will need to put away, if we take 20,000 times 3.54, 3.5460, you will need to put away $70,920. If you put this money away and you let it grow at 5%, every year you can take out $20,000 for the next four years. There's a many usage for the present value computation. I just showed you one example. Um, also, if you want to value an investment, this is how this is how you value an investment. What is the present value of the future cash payment. This is an, I mean, this is a very important concept in accounting, extremely important, because you will see that when you need to find the price of the bond, okay, you will need the present value. So how is it, how is this concept used in accounting? Well, if you want to find the price of the bond, if you want to find the pension obligation, if you want to find the present value of the loan, I mean, it's endless bonds, pension, loans, Anything, anything that's long term, anytime, simply put, anytime you are going to be paying, paying or receiving a future amount of money, every time you are paying or receiving, you need to find the present value of that payment. You need to find the present value. So you would record everything at the present value. Also, what's going to happen sometimes, sometimes you might be asked to compute the interest. Sometimes you might be asked to compute the the period. Sometimes you, you'll be given the payment, you'll be given the uh, present value, you'll be given the interest rate, you find the period, or you're going to be giving the uh, present value, the payment, and the uh, interest, you need to find the period. And we can do so, just like what we did in the uh, using the tables. Let's start to illustrate, uh, work some examples to illustrate how, what else can we do with using the present value table. Jones expect an immediate investment of 57,466 to return $10,000 for eight years. So here's what this, this, what, what this quest, what this problem would look like. Jones was offered an investment. If you pay today, 57,466, you pay it off today, you pay that money today, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You will be able to receive ten thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar. Each one is ten thousand dollar for the next eight years. Okay. So we know n n equal to eight. We know the payment equal to uh, n equal to eight. The payment is ten thousand dollar. And we know the present value of the annuity is 57,466. So the question is, what interest rate, at what interest rate do we need to invest this 50,466 so we can take out $10,000 for the next eight years? So what's missing is I. Well, here's what we do. We'll, we'll remember, just remember this formula that if you take the payment, remember we talked about this, if we take the payment times the factor will give us the present value. We have the payment here is $10,000. We don't know the factor. We don't know the factor. We know the present value of the payment of all the payment is 57,466. Now we can find the factor. We just The factor is 57,466 divided by 10,000. All what I did is I rearranged this formula. So the, the, the present value annuity factor, if we look at the factor, that's 5.7466, whoops, 5.7, sorry, 5.7466. So that's the factor. Now, if I have the factor 5.7466 and I have N equal to 8, well, let me go to the table of the present value annuity factor. If I go to the table... Again, you want to make sure you're working on the right table. Present value annuity factor, n equal to 8. I know the n equal to 8. I don't know the interest rate, but if I go across and find the closest one to 5.7466, and it's right here. So the in, if, so you need to invest this money at 8%. So this investment, 
So the, the answer for this problem, the I equal to 8%. So if you invest your money, if you invest 57,466 today, keep this money for eight years, taken, taken out 10,000 every year, earning 8%, your investment will earn 8% for eight years. This is what we're saying here, okay? Let's take a look at the second example. Keith Riggins expect an investment of $82,014 to return 10,000 for several years. If Riggins earn 10%, how many annual payment? Now we need to know the payment that he will receive. We need to know N. What are we looking at here? Here's what we're looking at. If Keegan pays today 82,000, and fourteen dollars, Keegan's will be able to receive. We don't know the payment. We don't know how many how many payments, but we know Keegan can earn ten percent. We'll do the same concept, and the payment is ten thousand. But we don't know how many times we're going to be receiving this payment. So if we take eighty-two thousand fourteen dollars divided by ten thousand to find the factor, and the factor is eight point two zero one four. Now we know the interest rate is ten percent. We'll go to the present value annuity table. And here we are looking at 10%. And we go we go down until we find the factor 8.2. Or the closest thing to 8 point, actually it's right here, 8.024. We go across. Well, you have to wait. You, you, this investment will take 18 years. So if you put away today, so N equal to 18. What we're saying is this. Keith, if Keith put away today $82,014, invest this money at 10% for 18 years, Keeks can take away every year $10,000. And this is what you usually do when you get closer to your retirement. What you do is you sell all your investments, all your stocks, all your bonds, and you buy an annuity. And this is basically what an annuity. So you pay $82,014 for that annuity, and you'll be able to take out $10,000 every year for the next 18 years. So you would receive in total 180,000, but over 18 year period, which is you paid for it $82,014. So this is how we use it, okay? Let's take a look at more examples. This exercise here. David, fi uh, Greg, finances a new automobile by paying 6,500 cash and agreeing to make 40 monthly payment of $500 each. The first payment to be made one month after the purchase. The loan bears an annual interest of 12%. What's the cost of the automobile? Okay, well, let's find the cost of this automobile. So they're buying, David is buying an automobile and David will have to pay upfront 6,500. So 6,500 times one, which is the factor is one, equal to 6,500. So today, Dave will have to pay 6,500. In addition to the 6,500, Dave will have to make a payment of $500. Listen to me carefully. This payment is monthly. It's a monthly payment of $500. And he's going to have to make this payment for 40 periods. So N equal to 40. So we are giving N. And the interest rate is 12%. Well, if the payment is monthly, it means we have to take the interest rate and divide it by 12. Remember, if the payment is not annually, we have to adjust the interest rate. The payment is monthly, we divide by 12. If the payment is semi-annually, we divide by 2. If the payment is quarterly, we divide by 4. Okay? So here the payment is monthly, so we divide by 12. So the interest rate, I equal to 1%. Now we know N, we know I. Now we need to find out the present value of those $500 40 payments. So... I equal to 1%, and we're going to go down to 40, and the factor is 32.838347. So, so the payment of the car is 6,500 plus the present value of the $500 annuity. So we're going to take 500 times 32.8. 347, which is equal to 16,417.35. So he's going to pay 6,500 plus 16,417.35. So this is the price of the car. Let me see if I can find another pen. So this is the price 
this is the price of the car okay let me highlight so it's six thousand five hundred plus the present value of the five hundred dollar payment okay let's take a look at exercise 10 okay c and h ski club recently borrowed money and agreed to pay it back with a series of six annual payment of five thousand dollar so it's this looks like an annuity okay ch subsequently borrowed more money and agree, agrees to pay it back with a series of annual payment of seven thousand five hundred the annual interest rate for both loans is six percent okay so here it says use table uh, to find the present value of these two separate annuities use table b1 and use table b3 so what they want us to do they want us to use table b1 which is to to find the present value individually okay then use table b3 to find the present value all in one shot so let me let me let's use both tables this way hopefully it will help you understand so for the first if we're using table b1 table b1 is the present value of a single payment so they borrowed money and agreed to pay it back with a series of six annual payment five thousand five thousand five thousand five thousand five thousand and five thousand this is what they have to pay back now the interest rate on this loan six percent on both loans six percent so i equal to six percent now they have to pay this 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 payment one year one year from now two year from now three year from now four year from now five year from now six year from now now i'm going to go to the table the present value of b1 and find the factor for five for n equal to one i equal to six so notice i have to go to table b1 which is the present value of a single amount six percent this is this is the factor and this is i would use this factor this factor this factor so notice n equal to one n equal to two n equal to three four five six so those are the factors that i'm going to be using okay so you can write them down if you'd like to and i'm going to take each payment separately um, each five thousand multiplied by the factor so times point nine four three four times point eight nine zero zero times point eight three nine six times point seven nine two one times point seven four seven three times point seven zero five zero and you have to find the individual answers and if you find the individual answers all the answers they should add up to twenty four thousand five eighty eight okay now I'm going to move on to table B3 and do the same computation. Well, table B3, I have an annuity of 5,000, N equal to 6, yes, and I equal to 6 as well. Let's go to table B1 and see what we find. N equal to 6, N equal to 6, and I equal to 6. The table is 4.9173. So if I take 5,000 times four point nine one seven three that's going to equal to twenty four thousand five eighty eight notice it's the same answer what you need to know if you add up all these fa factors and you can add them up they will add up to this present value annuity factor so this is basically showing you that an annuity can be found using table b1 the long way discount each payment separately but since it's an annuity we can go to the annuity table and find the factor all at once in one shot now the same thing for number two uh, sorry the same thing for the 7500 well for the 7500 the answer is 24,587 whether you used table b1 or table b3 you can do the computation yourself but this is a good exercise to show you that if you have if you have uh, a series of payment you can use it you you can find the answer using the present value of a single payment present value of a single payment let's take a look at this exercise auto borrows money on april 30th by promising to make a four annual payment of thirteen thousand 
each on November 1st, 2019, May 1st, 2020, November 1st, and May 1st, 2021. So notice here that we're gonna be making four payments and the payment is 13,000. What you need to notice here is, um, well, let's look at the question first. How much money is auto able to borrow if the interest rate is 8% compounded semi-annually? So, auto will have to make 13,000, 13,000, 13,000 and 13,000. This looks to me like an annuity. We are told the I for this, the annual I is 8%, but the interest is compounded semi-annually. It means you have to divide I by two. So the interest rate is 4%. N equal to four. We have four payments, one, two, four periods, one, two, three, four. Now all what I have to do is go to the table, 13,000 times the present value factor I equal to four and equal to four. So let's go to the table. 4% and 4% they meet at 3.6299. So I'm come back here, 3.6299 and auto can borrow 47,189. Borrows will, auto will borrow this money and auto, uh, bought, uh, auto will pay 13,000, 13,000, 13,000 and this loan will be paid off. Now, how much money is auto able to borrow if the interest rate is 12% compounded semi-annually? So now what happened is the interest rate went up. Can he borrow less or would he be able to borrow more? Well, the interest rate is higher. You're going to be able to borrow less because the present value is going to be lower. So let me show you. So again, we're dealing with the same payment, 13,000, 13,000, 13,000. Now the interest rate is 12% semi-annually. You have to divide by two. So 6% and equal to four. Now we have to find the factor. We have to find the factor, which is the payment is 13%. I equal to six. I equal to six. And equal to four. And the factor is 3.4651. If we multiply that by 13,000, auto can borrow $45,046. Now let's take a look at the third scenario. How much money can 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 auto be able to borrow if the interest rate is 16% compounded semi-annually? Now the only thing the difference is since 16% semi-annually, I equal to 16% semi-annually divide by two. So we use the 8%. So now we're using the 8% for period and the factor is 3.12. So if we take 13,000 times 3.3121, the amount is gonna be less, $43,057. So this is how we found the present value of those payment, the present value of those loans. Okay, let's take a look at exercise 12, exercise 12. Spiller plans to issue, oh, this is a bond, uh, is it a bond? To issue a 10% 15 year, oh yeah, it's a bond. This is, this is, this is what we need to know, how to compute the price of the bond. So, Spiller plan, to, Spiller Corporation plan to issue 10% uh, 15 year, half a million par value bond payable that pays interest semi-annually on June 30th and December 31st. So the annual rate is 10, the semi-annual rate is five because we're paying the interest semi-annually. The bond are dated December 31st, 2019 and are issued on that date. So it's a 15 year, it means 30 payments because, because this bond makes payments twice a year. So we have N equal to 30, the payments, uh, the the, uh, the semi-annual rate is um, so. So the payment is five percent. The payment on the bond. The bond are dated. We talked about this. If the market interest rate for the bond is eight percent, what is the total cash proceeds from the bond? Interesting. Now we have to go back to the bonds, and we we looked at bonds. You don't know how the bonds work. If you don't know what, what is a bond, I'm gonna review real quick how a bond work, but you need to know how a bond work. When you buy a bond, you will get two things. When you, when you buy the bond, you're gonna get two things. When you buy the bond, you're gonna get 
your par value plus payments. So when you buy the bond, you're going to get two things, the par value plus the payment. So today, so let's take a look at today. The question is, how much will you pay for this bond? This bond's going to pay you half a million, the par value, 15 years from now, 15 years from now. Also, the bond is going to be making 30 payments. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So the bond is going to be making 30 payments. Now, what is the payment? Well, the payment, the bond has a par value of half a million. You multiply the payment by 10% times one half. Why? Why one half? Because the bond pays interest semi-annually. So if we take half a million times 10%, that's going to be 50,000 times one half is 25,000. So each payment, each of these axes, which are 30 axes, each of these axes equal to 25,000. So when you pay for this bond, you're going to, you're going to pay for two things. You're going to pay for the future value of the, so you're going to pay for this, half a million, and you're going to pay for the 25,030 payments. So to find how much you will pay for this bond today, you will discount everything. So listen to me carefully. You will discount everything using the market, using the market. So when you go to the table to find the present value of the bond, you would always use the market rate because the investor wants to earn the market rate. The market rate is 8%. That's annually because we're doing everything semi-annually. So i equal to four so for this exercise we're going to be using both tables b1 and b3 so let's first finish table b1 so for table b b1 the interest rate is four percent the period is 30 period and the factor is 0 0.308 3.3083 so what does that mean it means this half a million you're going to discount the half a million at 0 0.3083 which this half million by itself is worth 154,150 now before i look before i find the final answer i'm going to ask you a question here will my final answer for the bond will my final answer be more than more than half a million or less than half a million and why well let me tell you you can find how much the answer should be the answer should be more than half a million why well if you looked at my bond lecture it will tell you it will tell you that if you're offering 10 percent more than the market of eight your bond will sell at a premium therefore the bond price will be more than more than half a million so the half a million by itself is worth 154,150. Now we have to discount the $25,000. This is an annuity. Therefore I have to go, so I use table B1 for this one. I have to use table B3 for the annuity. Now I have to find the annuity factor. Again, I equal to 4% N equal to 30. Let's find, go to table B3 i equal to 4 n equal to 30 and the factor is 17 point the factor is 17.2920 17.2920 17 and if we'll take 25,000 times this amount it's going to give us 432,000 300 if I add the present value of the fate of the par value plus the present value of the payment I will pay for the bond 586,450 so this is how much you will pay for this bond today and as I told you it's going to be a premium bond you're going to pay more than half a million because what the company is offering 10 percent on the bond is greater than the market value the market only requiring eight percent so this is an important computation finding the price of a bond finding the price of a bond okay let's take a look at this exercise 
Compute the amount that can be borrowed under each of the following circumstances. So how much can you borrow? A promise to repay $90,000 seven years from now at an interest rate of 6%. Well, it's good to like just see this on a graph. See this on a graph. So you promise to repay 90000 So you borrowed money from someone and tell them, look, I will give you back $90,000 seven years from now. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pay you six percent. How much will you loan me today? Obviously, they're gonna loan you less than ninety thousand. Specifically, how much less than ninety thousand? This individual wants to earn six percent for seven years. Well, we have to find the present value of the single payment. You're only gonna pay them the ninety thousand dollar only once. So we go to table B1 because you're only paying them once, and you're gonna pay this money seven years later, and the promise is 6%, therefore the factor is 0.6651. So if we take 90,000 times 0.6651, this is a 51, you will be you would lend them today 59,859. And what's going to happen, you wait, and this money will grow at 6%. Well, let me show you that that's the case. So if you gave someone 59,859, 59,859. If you gave someone 59,859, and this money is going to grow for seven years. So, year one, year two, it's going to grow for seven years, and it's going to grow at 6%. So, we'll take the prior amount times 1.06, and if we let that money grow for seven years, and notice you will get exactly 90,000. You'll get exactly 90,000. Okay, let's go back to the second exercise. I mean, the second scenario. An agreement made on February 1st to make three separate payment of 20,000. On February 1st, a year from, from the borrowing, 20,000, another year, and another year at an interest rate of 10%. So notice here what we have is we have an annuity. We have an annuity. Why? Because you're going to lend them the money today and they're going to pay you 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, and 20,000. Okay? So N equal to 3, the I equal to 10%. Now the question is, how much will you lend them today? So you will make 10% on that investment when they pay you back 20, 20, 20. Well, what do I have to do? Find the present value of those payments. N equal to three, I equal, N equal to three, I equal to 10, the present value of an annuity. N equal to three, I equal to 10. And the factor is 2.4869. So I'm gonna take 20,000 times 2.4869, and you will give them today 49,738. And what's going to happen, a year from now, they'll pay you 20,000, that money grows at 10%, they'll pay you 20,000 and 20,000. Well, why don't we also show you how this works? Because maybe if you see that, it will it will help you understand this concept. So today you're going to give them 49,738. It's going to grow at 10%. So this money a year from now, you're going to multiply it by 1.1 and it's going to become 54,711. Then they're going to pay you back 20,000. What's left after a year is 34,712. Then this money, so this is, so this is, uh, after one, after year one. Okay, so this is balancing when you start year two. Um, so this is after one year, after year one. This is how much money they will take the 20,000. This is the remaining balance. Then this balance will grow at 10% times 1.1. Then you're going to take, they're, they're going to pay you 20,000. And what's left is 18,182. This money that remained at the beginning of year three will grow at 10%. 
then you will take away then they will pay you 20,000 and notice it worked perfectly then the balance is zero so so you can kind of in a sense confirm your computation and increase your understanding of this concept as always i would like to remind you to like the recording if you have any questions please let me know in the next session we would look at the future value of an annuity like the recording share them during the coronavirus everyone most people are relying on online lectures please make sure to share the wealth if they benefit you it means they benefit others and check out my website for additional resources good luck and study hard most importantly stay safe